good afternoon. It is uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, actually, it is straight up noon. Uh, we still haven't got back on the road yet. Uh, still taking a little bit of time with the family. But in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and change the fuel filter that I've been needing to change. And I'd go ahead and, and show you how to do it. Uh, when I first took it to Firestone, the, the me mechanics over there are awesome. Ken is awesome. He's the only one that I really like to work on this truck. Uh, but some of the things that I can do cheaper, I will do, and one of those things is changing out the fuel filter. Changing out the fuel filter is on one of these trucks is fairly simple, straightforward. Uh, basically, you go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something and get yourself a, a new fuel filter. This is a Wix fuel filter. It's got a uh, 0.9 micron uh, filter, filtering system in it. And in this kit, you also get a gasket. This gasket's pretty important, so please don't just ignore it. And then you've got your filter. The other things you're going to need is you're going to need a 1 and an 8 socket. Because it's pretty far down there, at least my truck is pretty high, so I need to have a, a, a pretty long uh, extension and a ratchet. And then, of course, some gloves so you don't get diesel on your hands, or if you do, fuck it, it don't matter anyway. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing was putting a little pan up underneath the truck and to do it the right way for you, but fuck it, I'm doing it my way. So, first thing we're going to do is don on our gloves. So there's our fuel filter on the driver's side of the truck. And... That gives you a little more perspective on where it's at on the truck. So, basically all we're going to do is take our 1 and an 8 and put it on top of that. Spin it off real gentle. Pull the fuel filter out. Dump the fuel that's in it. Uh, put the new fuel filter on the cap. Put it back in. Close it. And be done with it. Now... Oh, uh, let's see. Can you see? Let it be. Right here is a little yellow tab. That little yellow tab, you move this direction, counterclockwise. And what that does is it releases the bottom hold of it, uh, of the fuel filter to drop the water and also any fuel that's in the fuel filter currently. You want to be sure to move that back clockwise uh, before you start the truck or you're going to be in trouble. So let's go ahead and get this cap off. And we just turn this. Till it gets loose. Okay, so we've got our fuel filter out, and as you can see, it's it's not really in too bad a shape. Uh, it is black from uh, all the particulates that are in the fuel. But uh, since we go ahead and since we have this new one here, I, I like to change this about every 20,000 miles, whether it needs it or not. So uh, there's that. All right. So basically, just take your fuel filter, kind of snap it off out of this. Sometimes it's a little stiff, just like that. That is the top, the hole goes on the bottom. Now, that little uh, gasket that I was telling you about is right around the cap here. Be sure to replace that as well. So now let's take our new fuel filter. It just snaps in. Like that. And our new gasket. Goes around like that. And then what I like to do is put it real close. Just make sure it's all nice and snug. Also by putting my fingers on it, since I got diesel fuel on it, it kind of makes it wet, which makes better seal. 
So then we just put this back inside. So basically you just hand tighten it. And then come back with your ratchet and just tighten it just a little bit more. So now that I've tightened all that back up, I need to get back down here to this yellow switch. Uh, where'd he go? Right there. I'm trying to see if I can get down in there. You can see it. Alright, so we just put that yellow plastic knob switch right there. Pushed it from, oh, I guess 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock clockwise. That closes that off. And now, right now, our fuel filter is completely changed. Everything's out. The problem we have at this moment, because it's a diesel, it's not primed. It's going to lose prime once that air bubble gets up in there. So, simply uh, to handle that, all we're going to do is turn off, turn on, and turn off our ignition like three or four times. Let that thing fill up before we start it. Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Okay, we change out the fuel filter. Uh, probably going to do a couple more things around the house and then start looking for some local runs this week around here. I know I have one Thursday with LGS local for Cook's children. You'll figure the irony in that. Uh, but I think next week, if everything goes well this week, next week I'm going to go ahead and start getting back over the road and start making some more money because sitting here at the house, just yeah, I drive up the walls. I, I can't handle it too much, but I'm here for my family, so that's important. And uh, other than that, I just can't sit in the house and do nothing and stare at each other. It's just, it's uncomfortable for me. I got to be doing something. So, all right. That's how you change a fuel filter. Peace out. We'll talk to you. Once I get this offloaded, I'm on my way back to the house. I'll drop the trailer and get back in and see Mama. Mama was asleep this morning when I left, so... I remember to bring my telephone in case somebody needed me. But I don't really like talking a whole lot on the phone, so I'm kind of glad that, you know, people don't really call me a lot on this. If they end up do calling me and I don't know them, uh, they do get to see the worst side of the, the not as nice side of me. I just, I don't, I don't really like doing the phone very much. I'll do you face to face. I'll talk to you face to face all fucking day long, but the phone and text messaging, I mean, I'll text message a little bit. That's why I don't give my phone number out very much to anybody, man, because next thing you know, everybody and their brother's calling you about all sorts of shit, and then somebody gives your number over to somebody or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're uh, fucking getting these phone calls, wanting to sell you shit and everything, I'm like, I don't have time for that, you know, this is a business phone, so, call me if you need me, other than that, leave me the hell alone, because I just don't, don't like to talk on the phone, and I don't like the text message, maybe I'm just old school that way, I don't know, good morning. It is Friday morning. Yesterday morning we did one uh, one load here locally, and uh, we were running so late we had to do the next load here this morning. So we just did two local runs this week. Not a whole lot uh, going on. They've got more stuff going out in far, and I may end up taking some more of that tomorrow uh, next week. But for right now, I told them I just like to stay local uh, at the moment, and then we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. You got five bucks? Huh? You got five bucks? Five bucks? <laughs> it costs that much in gas? <laughs> Anyway, 
this is a busy little place right here, let me tell you. Uh, everything's going okay. Uh, I just need to get back out there on the road, but I want to make sure that my home is stable and that the family is stable and understands what, you know, what they need to do and make sure that they don't need me around and if they don't, then I need to get back out on the road and make a living because these local things, they're, they're okay. They really are. They're really okay because you don't really go very far, you know, and I think, I think our rate is like 260, 250 or something like that for a local run up to 75 miles and um, I mean when you get a when you get a run like this where you're just five miles down the road I mean that's 26250 for driving 5,000 pounds five miles down the road I mean I, if you, they had a lot of these you would actually in my mind you know you'd come out better doing this because you don't use hardly any fuel uh, so this is our second run this week for this, so that's 500 bucks, 525 or something like that. My fuel gauge hasn't moved, so, you know, versus the, uh, what was it, 1500 or whatever, running down to FAR, you know, we use $600 in fuel, so. Uh, local runs are okay, but they don't, there's not, there's not enough of them to keep me busy enough to make it worth uh, staying just local. So that's why I do local shit and bar shit. So maybe I'm not making a whole lot of sense. I don't know. Kind of tired. Again, I didn't sleep well last night. Oh. Had to walk out to the truck trying to drink my cup of coffee. Because I got up a little bit later. Mother just set the alarm a little later. And although I enjoyed the 15 minutes extra sleep, I didn't have enough time to get my cup of coffee in me. I really woke up to get out over here. So, But we got it done. Next week, uh, they don't have anything local going on. So either I'm going to have to do local with uh, uh, Linux or I'm going to have to go ahead and make sure the family is stable and take off over the road or if they're not or if they still need me then I'm just going to have to take next week off too. I can't afford to do that. I really can't. Now I'm thinking about a $5 foot long. Yep. Anyway, Monday Terry's going to go into surgery. She's going to have a port put in so they can start uh, chemotherapy on her. And uh, they're also going to do a bone marrow aspiration to see if the cancer went back into her bone marrow or. Honestly, I, I kind of think it is in her bone marrow because even the doctor said that part of her hip is hot, which means there's something there, but they don't know if that's from the prior radi radiation and shit that they did before or if it's something new. So when, as soon as she said that shit, I'm thinking, motherfuckers, man, you got the tumor, you got the cancer kicked down the first time, but it was still in her bone marrow and you guys didn't get quite to it. They're not going to use the same chemotherapy because now the um, cancer would be uh, built up a, a tolerance or an immune immunity to that kind of chemotherapy. So they're going to try a couple other things. Every all options are on the table, and uh, you know we'll progress through them as they come. But other than that, you know, just trying to take care of the last few things and get everybody set, and ready to ready to roll, and be there for mother and. Make sure everybody's happy and I think we'll be alright.
those little pieces on the very back bounce like this. And I'd be a little bit worried about it. Sometimes shit just piles up on top of shit, on top of shit, on top of shit. And then you feel like you're fucking... have the weight of the world on your shoulders. And I mean, what the fuck can you do, you know? Just sometimes a bunch of shit happens. A lot of stuff I want to say, but I'm not going to say it to the video camera because I don't want anybody to have an opportunity to see what is inside. I have to be very careful and guarded on what I let out because people won't understand. They don't understand. They think they understand. Maybe. Or they think they might have an idea. Maybe. Dude, I'm about ready to lose it. I'll tell you. I'm about ready to fuck. And as things would have it, I've lost my boost pressure. Which means I cannot take this load down to far. I've got to take this truck into my mechanic and have him look at it and try to fix it. You could move over. Anyway, I've got a really, really fuck it, man. Damn it, I've lost that fucking gasket again. Fuck, my EGT's jumped up to fifteen hundred and. I tried to go up a fucking hill and I was doing 20, 30 miles an hour and then I got up here to this motherfucking light and I stopped at the light and I pushed the accelerator and I wasn't going anywhere. I can hear the exhaust, the exhaust leak right now. So, yeah, I blew that fucking gasket. Make it back to Mansfield or not. I needed this fucking trip too, man. I need to fucking make some money. But it is what it is. Hey, Ken. Hey, are you, are you at work today? Are you busy, busy? Well, 
I'm trying to limp from Midlothian. I've lost all my boost pressure. I think that gasket gave out the rest of the way. And I've got an uh, 11,000 pound load on the trailer. I've called another driver to see if he can come pick it up. And they're telling me they ain't going to be able to be here till 7. And I said, okay. So I'm trying to... To turn, I've turned the load around and I'm trying to limp back to Mansfield. I was just going to come up there and bring the truck straight up to you and see. I don't even know if it can be fixed tonight. I doubt it. But either way, either tonight or tomorrow, it's got to be fixed. And it, this way, it gets it closer to Mansfield. So these, this other driver will make all the money. Fuck! We'll uh, have an easier time getting the load. I hope to God it's that fucking gasket. I can't afford anything else right now. And I've got the gaskets in the truck. I just... I've been dealing with Terry and, and keeping everybody where they need to be and being a rock for everybody. And the first fucking over-the-road load I get, my truck craps out. So... Anyway, I'm limping your direction. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you for listening to me bitch a little bit. Talk to you soon. Bye. Boost pressure is at five. Now it's zero. EGTs are fourteen hundred. right now. I can't even see straight. You know, I don't ask people for shit, but I constantly have motherfuckers ask me for everything. I need money. I need cigarettes. I need food. I need a place to live. I need this. So here I am helping everybody else out. But I can barely keep us, ourselves above, you know, fucking. above water or whatever. Lovely. Anyway, the shit came back on, on uh, Terry's cancer. It is not in her bone marrow. Uh, at least not yet that they found where they found it last time. However, it is Ewing sarcoma PNET. Same shit she had last time. Very tough to get rid of. Uh, they're going to start chemotherapy on her Monday. And uh, then if that doesn't start affecting it, they get talking about sending her to St. Jude's research hospital where they're doing some testing of drugs and shit to get rid of it. so fucking hard to find, much less keep, and then when you do find a fucking job, they don't want to give you insurance because they want to make you part-time so they don't have to pay the insurance. Well, you can't even fucking live on part-time income, you know, so, and then fucking Obama comes in with his bright, brilliant fucking idea, well, let's just make everybody have insurance, raise everybody's fucking rates, penalize people, which nobody's paid any of that yet, so everybody still thinks they got it good. Oh, Obama's going to pay everything. I don't have 
have to pay for my house anymore. I don't have to pay for this. I don't have to pay for that. No, I pay for it, bitch. It's all right. This country's going to hell. It's well on its way. It's probably almost there. The rich, they don't give a shit because they have money to pay for everything. Can buy their way out of problems. The poor, they just make poor. And then the people like me who are stuck down towards the poor bottom of it, trying to fight to provide for his family and fucking make a living not depending on anybody else, although everybody else is still depending on me. I need to fucking lose it, okay? I've got all this fucking shit on my head, all this stress that I'm trying to deal with and I'm trying to get through. fucking thing after the other. I'm running out of money. Fuck. This was not what I had planned. I knew there was a problem, especially at that light just before I lost the gasket, before the truck wouldn't roll anymore at a decent speed. Uh, because my temperature is 800, 800 degrees right now. I'm stopped. I'm showing 825. It's not going down. It's actually going up. That's, that's not good. One of these days, I'm not going to be here, and then everybody who keeps relying on me to do shit, pull them out of shit, give them hands out, feed them, all that other shit, they ain't going to have all that. Then what, are, what the fuck they're going to do? Just find somebody else to mooch off of, probably.